Good morning, good morning. Another hot day. I'm Trooper Steve, your new six traffic safety expert, among many other things. And uh, today we're live here in the city of Altamont Springs. Altamont Springs, two sided, uh, east and west, uh, with the I 4 as kind of a divider out here. And if you are familiar with I 4 and State Road 436, you're probably like, ugh. But hear me out. Hear me out. I'm here today because a viewer has said that the place is just a mess. Now, I agree with the viewer 50-50 on this. It's a mess because, well, they say it's a mess. But also, this area has gone under a complete facelift if you've been out here, uh, if you've lived out here for at least maybe the last five years or so. Uh, I remember watching this area get redesigned, extra lanes put in, different merge lanes, uh, different designators for uh, certain travel lanes, and now we are left with what we have out here now. I've been calling it a diverging diamond, uh, but in a technical sense, I, I think I might be off a little bit. It is a, uh, a diverging of many things, I guess we could say. Uh, there's a lot of crossover traffic that does take place. Uh, there's a lot of extra turn lanes out here. Uh, we rarely see uh, three designators for a turn. Normally our, our goal is to see two, but out here on some of our exit and entrance ramps, it's three travel lanes leading there. For example, if you're traveling I-4 westbound and exiting to Altamont Springs, State Road 436, and trying to go towards like the Altamont Mall, there's three left turn lanes in that area. So a lot of what we're going to see and what we're going to talk about is drivers being completely aware of what's happening before it happens. And in most cases in life, we can't predict that. On our roadways, we can predict that because there's signage that lets us know exactly what is taking place. Uh, so we're going to drive around this area for a little bit. We're going to check this out, see what we see. Uh, I'm sure we'll see a few clowns here and there, but I'm really hoping that uh, as the most part, we don't see any crazy driving. I, my goal is never to come out here and just see mess. I would prefer we go 20, 25 minutes of a stream and we're able just to talk about the laws, talk about the roadway and not run into any of those clown drivers. But I am sure it will happen. I'm sure we'll see something, but let's hit the road out here. I'm parked on the east side of I-4, we're currently facing westbound, so towards Apopka, uh, just to give you a directional reference. And we're gonna slide out of this marathon parking lot, and we're gonna go out to 436 here. I wanna go through the intersection, and then we'll turn back around, we'll turn back around and check out the eastbound, and I will do my best to try to exit off and get back on. The problem here, the re-entry is really far, and I don't know if we'll have time for that. So let's hit the road and uh, see what 436 has to offer us this morning. It is a beautiful day, currently 74 degrees outside here in the city of Altamont along 436 here. It's going to be a hot one, uh, highs in the 90s today, so be very, very cautious. I want to slide out to the center travel lane so we can have good observation. So what are we looking at? Four lanes! Four lanes westbound here, with two exiting to your left to head westbound on I-4, and then a single eastbound I-4 exit. So you have four lanes headed here, obviously all four lanes crossing over together. Keep in mind, you should do your best never to change lanes within an intersection, just because someone's not expecting you to. So as we cross over here, nice and smooth, right? Off to the right-hand side is a quick merge, and people need to be real, real careful of that. We want to get turned back around as safely as possible. I'm not going to push my way into traffic because I encourage you guys not to do that. So I am not going to do that. We'll cross over here off of Westmont and we will get turned around safely so we could uh, head and then head the opposite direction. But this area, guys, slammed busy all times of day. I could put DOT camera here in the middle of the night. And we're constant flow. 436 is not only a road people live off of, it is also an extremely uh, utilized, what I, I use the term, cut-through road. Uh, we have a lot of cut-through cities um, throughout our area, meaning not a lot of people live there, but a lot of people travel through there. Altamont, 
opposite. A lot of people live in Altamont Springs. A lot of people work in Altamont Springs. So it makes it busy all the time. But there's also a lot of new signage in places and every sign has a purpose to it. For example, see that sign right there? Stop here on red. Why? I don't know where this car uh, RAV4 is gonna go. Um, but it wants you to stop there, not to proceed forward. Why? Because there is no left on red. So they want you further back from the intersection here so that you're not in that turn thinking you can make the left. Our light's about to turn green and we'll go to make the U-turn because we're allowed to. And this is a very safe place to do so. So instead of me pushing through traffic, like a lot of people do, just making sure my video comes back here because I lost it on my monitor, stand by. Let me just confirm, Donovan, do we still have video? All right, we're, we're still good. All right, my video came back up here. So. Now, eastbound, I'm sorry, the sun is in our face, but this could be the hard part here because at Westmont, there are two left turn lanes to go to Westmont. Okay, a lot of people will jump in those two left lanes thinking that's gonna take them to I-4. It's not, okay? This is not the uh, portion to do that. Why? There's no signs out here that say I-4 left, not yet. You have to clear Westmont Drive before that begins. And that's what I'm gonna to try to do. So my goal here is, it's a big goal, um, and it's gonna mess us up a little bit. We have time. I am gonna approach I-4 from 436 in the westbound, in the eastbound direction, and then I'm gonna to exit to I-4 east. So you can see kind of what the lanes do there. You must be aware when out here and doing this kind of stuff, what is this guy doing? Look at this. That's the median, bro. That is the median. Not sure um, what he's doing. You can even see him through my other camera here. Right here. He kind of stopped right there in the travel lane. So I would definitely encourage you not to do that. I take a closer look. Looks like it is a construction vehicle. However, not the safest thing to do. Okay. Back to the front camera here. Now keep in mind, sun's in your face, so just bear with me here, okay? You're traveling eastbound, I'm in the left travel lane. You should be looking way up ahead, right? I never say look directly at the car in front of you. Look up ahead. Signs are already present, and then it says two left lanes, I can hit I-4 and head east, right? So we're gonna slide into this left lane here. And now I'm here. I normally, if this was just me driving, not with you guys, I would stay, I'd hop in the left because I know what's gonna happen, but I'm gonna hang out in this right left turning lane simply because things get a little dicey out here. If you're not paying attention, you will crash your car. It's that simple. I know, Steve, that's so such an exaggeration. No, it's not. If you're not paying attention, I-4 and 436 and any of these lane shifts or any of these turning lanes, you're gonna crash your car. Or you're gonna tick someone off and they're gonna yell at you. Why? Because these lanes end and it's equal opportunity with vehicles. So here, I purposely stayed in front of this semi-truck. Nice wide turn they're taking because so they can make the turn. And now I'm here. The other traffic over there should yield to me. They do and now we continue. So this right lane is going to end. I know that, so I'm gonna turn my turning signal on, I'm gonna move over, and you know what I am gonna do? I'm gonna give space to that semi-truck. Because ultimately, me and the semi-truck gotta work together, right? So I gave space to the semi-truck. Also, know your route. I know this lane keeps going, this lane doesn't end. So I'm gonna stay here for a second. Why fight traffic? if I already know my route, right? Why fight the traffic? So we're not gonna fight the traffic. All right, so we just got off I-4, 436. Like I said, it's gonna take me a second. We're gonna continue down here to 434, and then I'm gonna spin around so we can head the opposite direction. You can see, we share the road with a lot of vehicles out here. A lot of different vehicles. Got a car hauler right there, box truck up in front of me, large flatbed behind me. So being situationally aware is key to a lot of the things that we do. 
someone might say, well, Steve, you say this on every stream. Yep, I know. I say it because it matters. And when you tell me that we have problems in a certain area, and yet I know that that area has been under construction and that it's fixed. Look at this speed racer. Even clowns, some drive nice cars. So Dodge Challenger well over the posted speed limit. I'm, I'm cruise set at 65 and a 65, doing at least 80 plus. No turning signals. Man, I wonder if they... We need to send the turning signal link that we did with that guy. All right, so we're going to exit here to 434. And we're going to get back on to I-4. I, we can't do that from where I'm trying to go. So we're gonna hang out in this left lane here because I can't do that. So if you're joining us this morning, we're talking I-4, 436, Altamont Springs, that whole cluster of an intersection. A few things that a driver needs to be aware of there. Sorry, I get distracted on these lives because traffic, I see honks all the time and it's hilarious so distracting. Um, I-4, 436, Altamont Springs. The area is a disaster, but the only reason it's a disaster is because of drivers not paying attention to the travel lanes, and then they duck in and out of their travel lanes. I've seen it before. I've seen it all day. The ramps get backed up, drivers passing there, but the area is set up for success. There is no light timing issue there. And don't get me, I'm not just trying to be the guy that, look at this guy, on his bicycle up there, on his phone, at least he's got a reflective vest, but he's sitting there texting in between the lanes. If he runs this light, keep in mind, as bicyclist, and if you're traveling on the roadway, you are required to pay attention to the, look at him, running the red light, running the red light. Here's a good one for you. Can a bicyclist receive a ticket for running a red light? Yes, they can, but they'll be the first to complain when they get whopped by a car. So equal opportunity, guys. If you're gonna to wanna to ride on the roadway, which you have the right to, you also need to pay attention to the laws for the cars. A lot of people don't do that, they don't pay attention, and then issues happen, right? Okay, here we go. So we're underneath 434, and we're gonna make our way back uh, eastbound. There's that, there's that bicyclist again, second red light, run it. Let's let, let them know. Nice red light. I love this PA system. So I can't make any turns here. Should we let him know that he's supposed to stop? Nah, but he's obviously enjoying his day. So my producer told me to behave, uh, but you guys don't like when I behave because that's how we get results. So I'm sitting there talking to the camera. The camera's not even on me. Listen, equal opportunity here. Obviously, most people don't learn when the rules are out here, but maybe it takes someone getting called out. I've been called out to learn a few things, but this guy right here in my ear said behave, so I'm gonna be nice today. We're gonna just wish that he pays attention to all the traffic laws and he doesn't get into any type of crash. Not even wearing a helmet, there he is again, look. Is he gonna run it? He's hanging out in the crosswalk. He's sitting there, oh, now he's gonna go because he's allowed to because he's got a green light. So keep that in mind. We could talk about so many things all the time, guys, so many things. The sidewalk he could ride on and there would be no problem, but he chooses to be in the travel lane. Therefore, he must follow traffic law. Get it? All right, so we're gonna head back on to I-4 East and uh, I keep messing this up. I-4 West and make our way towards 436. We're doing good on time this morning. If you're joining us, we're focused on I-4 and uh, 436 in Altamont Springs. It's hard to really dissect it. I really, 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 maybe the viewers at home, poke the bear. How cool would it be if we could set up and launch a drone live and you could watch that? So then I could talk to you guys and show you certain things. It is 2024. I think we need Sky Trooper up in the sky there so we can show things like that. Uh, that would be really cool. 
So high, a lot of pedestrian traffic out here this morning all over. Uh, it's what? 8 47 in the morning so we've got to be real careful look at all those pedestrians there uh, bicyclists there we appreciate you guys doing what you do very kind all with reflective all with their helmets they're all paying attention they're all on the trail I could support that definitely definitely de look at these it says seniors on bikes SOBs <laughs> That's funny. Man, I love a good sense of humor when it comes to traffic safety. So we make our complete stop here, look both ways, no bicyclists. We're going to move on out. We're going to hit our ramp here. I love this ramp. This is from 434. We're now I-4 East back towards our destination of Altamont. Not uh, a far way to go. It's about a two to three minute drive. And now we're back Westbound, I-4, approaching 436. Now, you see how this ends? I merge. No one's got to merge. I have to merge. Merge safely, politely, and now we're good. So here's a little bit of something of what I talk about. I always say, hey, plan ahead before you get there, right? I, it didn't just come to me that I'm going to exit at 436. So I'm already in the right-hand side of the road. I'm paying attention to the signs. Altamont Drive. AKA 436, Altamont Springs and Popka, one mile ahead. Meaning, I'm probably about 60 seconds out to where I'm going. A mile, average travel time, about a minute. Depending on your speeds, obviously, but I'm an average is a mile a minute when you're on the highway. So I'm already here. It says exit only right lane. So I'm gonna be in the right lane. How often do we see a driver all the way on the left-hand side and then shoot across? Okay, something else to pay attention to. Look at the ground in front of us. Suddenly, instead of white hashed marks, it's now a multiple dash mark, right? This lets me know that this travel lane is the one that is not going to be part of the main line. It's going to exit. There is also markings in the road. Ready? Three, two, marking in the roadway. Let's me know that this lane is going to be a right turn only, okay? So I'm going to stay here for a second, but the goal is to head east. So I'm paying attention to the road. We're looking to what's happening in front of us and I'm dissecting immediately. Okay, I'm here. I don't do any do anything crazy. I can hang out here in this center one and it's gonna help me head east. Like I said earlier, we have three different lanes that head east on 436. I'm gonna do the center one just because it's the scariest one, okay? So I've got a big trailer in front of me. I've got cars on my left. I've got cars on my right, and I think I got a new six person behind me. I'm not sure. Um, on both sides here, we're all going to head in the same direction. Hear me on this. When you are making your turns, it is not time to change lanes, okay? You're making the left. It's not time to end that curvature of the roadway for you to shift left or shift right. Why am I saying this? Because the other drivers are not expecting you to do that. A lot of aggressive drivers, careless drivers, will use that as an opportunity to slide out in front of another car. No, illegal, dangerous, and if you catch a ticket, you deserve it. You want to maintain your direction of travel anytime you're in a turn lane. So when this light turns green, which it just did, we're going to practice it. Well, we're not going to practice because we're going to do it. So now we're going, turning signals on, we're cruising through here. And look at this guy. He's already got his turning signal on to go right. No. Keep yourself there. You cross with the other traffic. You're paying attention. And you maintain. You maintain. And suddenly, we're good to go. Look at, you got to watch out for guys like this that decide to push their way through. He waves at me, but I didn't let him in. He pushed himself in. Thank you, Delintz Contracting. So this area is also a construction zone, meaning... You are not allowed to answer a phone call with your hand. You are not allowed to hold or make any type of uh, use of your mobile device. It is a hands-free zone, period. This doesn't have to do with specific with texting. It has to do with everything. So although that intersection might not be 100% uh, under construction, the outskirts are, meaning this is an active construction zone, hence I have my mobile device 
mounted here on a, on a hands-free portion. I can answer with the steering wheel and have it connected, but part of understanding what's happening out here is not worrying just about you, but worrying about the cars around you. On that turn, what did I? What was I paying attention to? Obviously, the speed and distance between me and this gorgeous trailer in front of me. I mean that because I want one. And obviously, the car is to my left, and the lack of car to my right, and of course, the cars behind us. This is an extremely busy area, so it's more than just driving. It's being aware of what's happening. How many times have I said already? know where you're going, know the flow, right? If you're making the decisions at the very end, of course there's gonna be a problem. This is also a big problem. This minivan to my left has been driving with its right turning signal on for a hot minute. I'll never understand that. Never understand why that happens because you're ultimately distracting a lot of drivers. Here's another problem out here. They have placed a lot of no U-turn signs up temporarily in the construction zone. Uh, sun's kind of whitewashing uh, our screen out a little bit, but if that is a no U-turn sign. So rewind a few, I don't know what this car is doing. A little past the bar or am I a little back? I don't know. Um, so you've got to be aware that some, there, there might've been a time to where you're used to doing certain things, but because the layout of the land is going under construction, they may implement other traffic control devices based off of traffic engineering, based off of the construction, not the permanent project. Tracking? So just because the roadway is, it's, it can change, but it's, it's the responsibility of you as the driver to be aware of that. I can't stand when someone's like, hey, well, they just put that there, okay? If you go to the grocery store and you're there for the sale, but you're there the next day and you tell them, well, the sale was yesterday. Why don't I have access to the sale? Because the sale is over. Same out on the roadway. Well, the light used to be a stop sign. Now it's a yield sign or vice versa. Right. But what is it now? And that's the hard part to getting you guys to understand. I know I come from, it sounds like I come from a very heartless approach to this. I don't. I, I, I genuinely mean when I say I care about making sure you guys get from point A to point B safely. What happens in between there is totally up to you. And I want to give you guys the constant conscious knowledge to make sure that happens. Do I come across a little cold sometimes? Yeah. Do I come across very matter of fact? Absolutely but it's the trooper in me that has seen what happens on the roadway and how it affects you guys. Uh, I hate, I hate, hate, hate these crashes that are so preventable and then seeing people hurt by a little stuff. So we're gonna pull here into the plaza because it does not allow for a U-turn there. So what do you do? You find a way around it and a way to do it safely. And that's what I'm doing right now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, mm, Whole Foods, love me some Whole Foods. You know they have an avocado salad here that will change your life. I'm telling you, it's not a, not a, on my birthday, what did I want and what did Camila get me? An avocado salad, just a nice little basket of it. And it was the best thing ever. So, all right, we're gonna come back out here and we're gonna approach it the opposite direction again so we can see what's going on. There's nothing illegal about what we just did. So Florida statute talks about, there is a Florida statute off the top of my head, I can't remember the number, but avoiding a traffic control device. And avoiding a traffic control device means cutting through property in order to avoid maybe a stoplight that's taking too long. You're not allowed to do that, okay? Not allowed to do that at all. Here, because the sign over there says no U-turn, you would be, the only option you have is to pull into, uh, an area. So this guy pulled behind this a bit way far behind the stop bar because he's just sitting there typing on his phone. Look, on his phone, eliminated me from seeing, and now he just wants to type, type, type. I have to now pull forward even more so that I could see past his car. I'm allowed to make a right on red here. We're gonna make the right on red and do it safely. See how someone's small mistakes mess up someone else? I mean, he had no intention 
of messing me up. I truly believe that. But his simple action of being on the phone caused me not to be able to make my right turn when I was really pretty much allowed to, right? So here we go again, approaching 436 westbound. Your ramp's off to the left here. I'm gonna get to the far left uh, t uh, through lane so we can see what's going on. So those two left lanes go uh, to westbound I-4. We're facing westbound 436. So another thing that I'm just noticing out here, yielding and the stop bar. The yield signs are intentional. Uh, and I, I think they are placed out here in really, really good spots. Problem is so many people just blow by them, blow right by them. And they're there because if other traffic is coming on the main line, they want you to yield to that. So we're gonna watch this traffic move. Let's go. One shade of green. That's another thing. This, so many of you guys on your phone, I don't know what's going on. It really is turned into a bad situation. So we're gonna pull off, dissect this, and wrap this up. So, anybody else starving? I am. Uh, all right, let's go back this way. We'll pull off safely into a parking lot so that we can talk to each other real quick because obviously stopping in the middle of traffic is illegal, dangerous, and you're never ever gonna watch me do it unless I'm in my patrol car and there's an emergency, right? So let's pull off. Look how quick this merges. Turning signal on. I merge on over because I'm available to do so and we're good to go. I'm gonna pull into this parking lot here so we can stop and uh, talk about this real quick. And then I'll let you guys enjoy the rest of your day. I really hope you're having a great Thursday. Uh, this morning flew, flew by. It was a really nice morning. All right, listen, I appreciate you guys you more than you'll ever understand. Uh, I, I love the, the ideas of me visiting an area, but I need you guys to think about something. When you say this area is a disaster, why is it a disaster? Is it the infrastructure or is it the road, uh, is it the drivers? When it comes to this I-4 and 436, there are a lot of people who will disagree with me. It's the drivers. It has nothing to do with the infrastructure setup. Too many drivers are out and about, not paying attention to what they're doing. I have seen an increase in people on their phone greater than anything I have seen in a long time. And I don't know if that's because we're out and about with each other as often as we are, but it's the not paying attention to the stoplight, not yielding, even if there's nothing to yield to, you should still be slowing your vehicle because that other entering traffic is expecting that traffic to yield. When you pull onto the main line, pull into the most direct lane, then make your way over. Do not push your way over. That's gonna ultimately cause one, two, three people to put on the brakes, and then you can cause a quick and sudden crash. So if you're joining us, we were dissecting I-4, 436 in Altamont. At the end of the day, I'm putting the blame. This one, boom, drivers. It has nothing to do with the infrastructure. The infrastructure has been set up nicely. I enjoy driving through this area if everyone is paying attention. Appreciate you guys joining me today. Uh, we've got a lot going on over at News 6. Uh, make sure you head over to clickorlando.com slash on patrol. Watch some of our stuff there. And uh, yeah, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, love you guys. Wear your seatbelts today, hydrate. Uh, it's gonna be a hot one. And please pay attention to the little stuff. Wear your seatbelts.